Inspiring millions of musicians and music lovers all over the world, he was one of the Yardbirds' three legendary guitarists, who went on to great success with a consistently creative, decades-long solo career. Hi and welcome, I'm Dino, and this channel is for musicians, artists, and creative professionals of all levels, who want to learn how to work better, maximize their creativity, and stay inspired. If you liked the video, please subscribe, like, and comment. Then click the notification bell to get updates on future videos. Today, we'll talk about one of the best guitarists who ever lived. The eternally influential and innovative guitar rebel, Jeff Beck. He had a career covering an amazing array of musical styles. Constantly changing, evolving, and experimenting. Blazing new trails for the guitar and music through every decade. Innovating till the end. This is the man who Pink Floyd's David Gilmour called his guitar hero. Winner of eight Grammys, including three in 2011, he's one of only 26 artists to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, with the Yardbirds and Solo. I first heard him on the album Jeff Beck with the Yanhammer Group Live. I was five years old. I listened with my dad all the time. I loved Freeway Jam. At that age, I wondered how they put cars on stage with the band. Of course, years later, I realized it was Beck and Hammer making those car horn sounds. He's one of those rare guitarists who switched from playing with picks to playing with fingers. He switched from a Les Paul to a Strat in the 70s, which he kept as his main squeeze for decades onward. His playing could be beautifully violent, or his melodies heavenly like an angel singing a sweet lullaby. He could rip through burning blues with a vicious attack and touch. He could do anything. On top of it all, he was a true rock and roll rebel with deep rockabilly roots. I've broken up his career into three eras. Let's get into it. Born Jeffrey Arnold Beck on June 24th, 1944 in London, England. He first heard the electric guitar when he was six years old. Les Paul's How High the Moon. Later, he went to art college where he got going with various local bands. In 1965, his buddy Jimmy Page recommended him for the Yardbirds. Here, he helped pioneer psychedelic and hard rock on the Yardbirds' is Roger the Engineer, named after, you guessed it, Roger the Engineer. Blowing guitarist minds across the globe, innovating with guitar killers like Happenings 10 Years Time Ago, Over Under Sideways Down, The Naz Are Blue, Heart full of soul. There's loads of great Beck creativity happening, including a wide variety of guitar sounds. After leaving the Yardbirds in 66, he released a few solo singles like Hi Ho Silver Lining with vocals by Beck, and Beck's Bolero, featuring Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, Keith Moon, and Nicky Hopkins. During this time, Nick Mason said Pink Floyd wanted to have him join the band, but none of us had the nerve to ask him. In 1968 came his first solo album, The Jeff Beck Group's Truth, which featured Rod Stewart on vocals and Ron Wood on bass. You know those guys, don't you? Some favorites are his mean revved up blues and tasty wah guitar playing on tracks like I Ain't Superstitious, Blues Deluxe, Rock My Plimsoul, and Beck's Bolero, which was included on Truth. So much to learn from. The group broke up soon after their second album, Beck Ola. In 1969, Beck teamed up with Tim Bogert and Carmine Apice of Vanilla Fudge. As mentioned earlier, here Beck starts switching from his Les Paul to his longtime trademark Strat. Then a terrible accident. In December, he fractured his skull in a car accident and was out of commission for over a year. In 1971, Beck was back in action. He formed a band which included his brother from another mother, <laughs> drummer Cozy Powell. Are they twins? Their first album, Rough and Ready, is a bit all over the place with some good guitar playing. They broke up after their second album in 1972. Beck again worked with Bogart and a Piece with the Beck, Bogart and a Piece album coming out in 1973. The band dissolved in 1974. He put together a new group and teamed up with Beatles producer George Martin. Their collaborations Blow by Blow in 1975 and Wired in 1976, which was nominated for a Grammy, were a big commercial success. 
Beck was hugely influenced by Mahavishnu Orchestra and their guitarist John McLaughlin. Great playing, sounds, and styles and tunes throughout, with contributions from former Mahavishnu members Jan Hammer and Narada Michael Walden. You can learn endlessly from these albums, filled with Beck classics like Cause We've Ended As Lovers, Freeway Jam, and Blue Wind. Beck covers more ground in one album than many artists in their whole career. That hard rebel Beck edge is here big time. The following tours yielded that live album I love in 1977. Freeway Jam starts off with the classic guitar keyboards traffic jam intro. So fun. Then Beck starts this funky intro. Then he blasts off with ferocious solos and wild whammy bar moves. Can you imagine my five-year-old brain listening to this? I still have the same awesome feeling I've had since then every time I hear it. It's an event. What can you learn from this era? Try different guitars, pedals, effects, amps, and switch from picks to fingers and vice versa to add more colors and ideas. Don't be afraid to follow your creative muse. Try different projects, bands, styles, mix it up. Enjoy exploring music with different musicians. Have fun. So he did manage to work on a new album starting in 1979, which leads us to the second era, the 80s and 90s. In 1980, Beck releases There and Back in June, keeping some of the previous jazz rock sound. There are some good tunes and guitars, but nothing special. Beck went back to focus on his real purpose in life, building his famous hot rods. Remember, he's playing with his fingers pretty much from this point onward. Five years later, Flash in 1985, very 80s sound, using the dance sounds of the day, full of cheesy drum machines and not so interesting music. He covered People Get Ready, reuniting with Rod Stewart. Then he went back to the hot rods again. In 1989, Guitar Shop with Tony Hymas and Terry Bozio, the awesome drummer from Frank Zappa's band and Missing Persons. This one is aptly named as it's a shop filled with awesome guitars, guitar tones, guitar playing, soloing, and riffs. It's like I'm sitting on a couch in Beck's Hot Rod Garage where the band is set up and jamming these songs. I love the album cover. In 1993, Beck got back to his roots with the Big Town Playboys on Crazy Legs. Super fun rock and roll rockabilly. You can't not smile when listening to this. Back to the Hot Rods. 1999. Who else? One of his most diverse albums. He's jamming over dance beats. I love it. And again, innovating and exploring new guitar effects, sounds, and production. This is 34 years after he first debuted with the Yardbirds. How many other artists you know who've been around that long constantly evolving and experimenting. I'd love to know about more if you have some suggestions, drop a comment below. This album has become a recent favorite of mine. There's so much amazing stuff here to explore for months and years. What can you learn from this era? Keep following your creative muse. Keep taking creative leaps with technology. Keep going where no guitarist has gone before. If playing with a pick or fingers isn't working for you, switch! As always, have fun. Beck was frequently smiling, always having fun on stage. Here's what he had to say. I don't care about the rules. In fact, if I don't break the rules at least 10 times in every song, then I'm not doing my job properly. Feels like Beck was on to another very creative phase of his career. At 55, he was just getting started. This brings us to the new millennium, with Beck showing us how to keep evolving for the next thousand years exploring tonality itself further with a mastery of the whammy bar playing microtonal melodic scales from around the world in 2001 you had it coming he kept going down the road with dance beats and guitar experimentation lots of mean beck edge here i love it but there were other different styles here too soft slide blues sounding like an indian singer on nadia some great ambient guitars on suspension. Another great variety of music. In 2003, Jeff continued the electronic music hybrid playtime. Once again, a wide range of guitar sounds, riffs, effects, and cool ideas. Then, another hot rod vacation. 2008, performing this week at Ronnie Scott's, 
A Day in the Life won the Grammy for Rock Instrumental. It's amazing to see his finger guitar playing mastery and control, doing stuff I can't even comprehend. With the super legendary Vinnie Colaiuta on drums and super talented Tal Wilkenfeld on bass with Jason Rebello on keys. This is one of those thank God they filmed all this moments. There are great guitar playing close-ups. But even then, you have no idea what he's doing. Again, all fingers only. I'd have to do a separate video just on this one. Every song is special, different, and unique. These performances cover one end of the musical universe to another. 2010, Emotion and Commotion. With the heavy hammerhead and vocal collaborations with Joss Stone and Imelda May. The melodic playing on Lilac Wine is heavenly. Most of this album leans on the relaxed side of things. Very nice. Again in 2010, we have Live and Exclusive from the Grammy Museum. The live How High the Moon is full of energy. And a grinding hammerhead fills out some of the edge. A nice variety here. 2011, Rock and Roll Party honoring Les Paul. The man, not the guitar. Live album filled with turbocharged rock and roll rockabilly and featuring many great singers including Imelda May. Finishing off with the dream pairing of Beck with Brian Setzer on dual guitars, going back and forth on solos, awesome! Another album where you're smiling the whole time you're listening. You're hearing a master rockabilly player here, one of the best. 2015, the Live Plus album. Good live album, good playing, good exploration, worth listening to. 2016, Loud Hailer. The electronica here is even more adventurous and interesting than the previous dance-infused albums, including nice ambient tracks with a lot of space. It includes nice vocals from Rosie Bones. 2017, Live at the Hollywood Bowl from my hometown, Los Angeles. The amount of big league guests on this is staggering. Hammer, Buddy Guy, Billy Gibbons, Steven Tyler. The version of Beck's Bolero here is a really great live realization of the song. Everything here is awesome. 2020, he released Isolation, a single with Johnny Depp, famous actor, musician, and pirate. 2022, he released the full album 18 with Depp, featuring an eclectic mix of music, heavy electronic rockers to ballads and more. As always, with a mix of guitar styles and textures. He was featured on Ozzy's Patient Number no. 9. Depp joined Beck on tour in October. Unfortunately, soon after, on January 10th, 2023, Beck passed away after suddenly contracting bacterial meningitis, though he was pretty healthy and had been vegetarian since the 60s. What can you learn from this era? Never stop following and exploring your creativity, no matter how old you are. Keep enjoying that creativity. Keep having fun with it. Let it show you where you should go. And always be open to new ideas all the time. Today, we profiled a legendary rock and roll guitar rebel over the course of three eras. What did we learn? Keep trying different creative tools. Different guitars, instruments, pedals, amps, effects, Switch from playing with picks to fingers. Use slides, change tunings, create your own tunings. So many different kinds of artists can benefit from these ideas. Use different media, canvases, filters, settings, materials, techniques, equipment, gear, than what you normally feel comfortable with. Who knows what new boundaries you can break and innovate. Embrace technology. Let it expand your creativity. Multi-effects units, virtual amps, software, filters. The possibilities of guitar sounds are endless. Beck never stopped exploring. Listen to a wide range of music. Play with different musicians and styles. The big takeaway? Don't be afraid to follow your creative muse forever. Keep exploring your creativity, no matter how old you are. Have fun, smile, and keep enjoying the exploration. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you immensely. I hope Beck's creative spirit can help you take yours further. Please hit that subscribe, like, and comment, and click the notification bell to get updates on future videos. Leave a comment with your favorite Beck songs and albums. I'll feature them in future videos. Download the free PDF tutorial linked in the video description below. It'll show you three ways 
to use DAW templates to make sure your creativity doesn't get hindered by unnecessary work. Have an awesome creative day.